Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Meta Cafe. Grab your cup of coffee or tea, sit back, and let's chat about not only today, happy Friday, by the way, but also Saturday and Sunday. And of course, this is the weekend of the new moon, so we have a lot to talk about today. In fact, look at this, look at this. So I've written out the script for the entire day on the front and on the back. That's how much we have to talk about. So as much as I think sometimes I will have time to get to readings, I hope I will. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Um, but I would much rather interact with each of you. If you have questions or if you have any concerns, let me know. And let's just dive in and start talking about what we can expect. So here you are, Friday morning in a void of course moon. Yay! Right? Yay! From 6 a.m. Pacific time until 1.20 p.m. this afternoon, the moon is void, of course, in Virgo. So even though Virgo is a sign of work and getting things done, likely we're going to have some trouble with that today because at least here in the early part of the day, the moon in void, of course, is much more interested in rest, relaxation, meditation, yoga, spiritual pursuits, lounging around, escaping, etc., makes it a little bit more difficult to get up and go get them today. But that's okay. At 1.20 this afternoon, 3, 20, uh, 1, 2, 3, 1 to 2, uh, it'll be 4, 4.20 for you all on the East Coast before you get out of the void. So literally your work day is all about the void today. And then the moon moves into Libra and it changes fundamentally the energy from the focus on work, getting things done, organizing and practical to the more balancing kind of energies that come up with Libra. And we've talked a lot about Libra lately, so I'm not going to go into all of the details of Libra because today there happen to be a lot of other things that we can talk about that are going on. So first of all, We've already had the uh, moon squaring Jupiter this morning. We've already had the moon in a sextile to Mercury this morning. So those are the last aspects the moon makes. And the last, the very last aspect that the moon made was a sextile to Mercury. So it does make us sort of a little bit more communicative this morning, wanting to talk and exchange information and, uh, you know, basically be more social and, in a void of course moon, why not, right? Why not? Nothing else is going to get done. So sit around the water cooler today, sit at your desk and chat with the people around you, get on the phone, get texting, just have some fun this morning. The uh, background that is happening today is with Venus in a sextile to Pluto. Venus represents your relationships, right? Your, your love interests, your values, the things that you think are important, the things that you really uh, double down on in your life, right? If you believe, you know, if one of your values is about family time, then you're definitely finding yourself spending time with family. So whatever you value is also under sort of the, the scope today. Uh, as well, Venus rules finances. So we have financial considerations to think about. Pluto, of course, is the great transformer. He is a co-ruler of the uh, sign of Scorpio. And so we have some very powerful potential moving through the system when you've got Pluto in, con in any kind of configuration with another planet. And so we have intensity today then with our feelings, our emotions. We might feel deeply about causes, about people around us, about our finances, about projects, or about the things that are important to us. Sorry, I forgot to put my phone on silent. And uh, then we also can use the power of Pluto to strategize and plan for managing our wealth or managing our relationships or actually managing how it is that we uh, express our values out there in the world. So glad that I turned that off. Uh, okay. So let's say a quick good morning to everybody. I see people jumping in. Good morning, Rebecca and Amy and Elisa and Sarah Revinzai. Good morning. Uh, a happy belated birthday to you. I believe Thursday you said was your birthday. So we all wish you a happy birthday and a joyful year ahead. Good morning, Debbie Tibbetts, Tumiel and Jody. Good morning. And Mimi says good morning from the gallery. I hope you're having a fun time there. 
And what a great day too, with the moon getting ready to transition into Libra, you know, aesthetically pleasing things like art and, and sculptures and all the textiles and colors and all that is favored with the moon moving into Libra. Uh, Christine Erickson says, good afternoon. That's right. She's over there in Europe. And Tom Wright, wow, what gets you out of bed this early? Good day to you as well. Mary Tapping, uh, Moscow, good morning. And uh, Sarah says, Friday, today. Oh, today's your birthday, Sarah. Well, very happy birthday to you. Trust me when I say you do not want me to sing you happy birthday, but I know everybody on the uh, morning show here will wish you a happy birthday and uh, set you up for a prosperous, loving new year. Okay, so uh, I got to tell you, dreams. Remember, this week has been dream week for me. From the white wolf of uh, two nights ago to the uh, deep water of yesterday's dream, last night's or night before's dream, uh, last night I was in fire. I mean, I'm I'm doing this tour of the elements. Apparently, uh, I I was in a church or some kind of institution building, and it seemed important, and it seemed like it, it seemed very much like a church. I didn't see the symbols of a church, like a cross or uh, an altar or anything like that, but I got the sense that I was in some kind of sacred place, and it got lit on fire, and it, it was one of those kind of fires that just blows up, sort of like the wildfires in California where, you know, they just sort of blow up out of nowhere. And we were running, 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 trying to get people out of this building. And the interesting thing about the fire was that the, the only person that I recognized in my dream was my Sagittarius daughter, who is the mother of the daughter I dreamt about that I was protecting from the white wolf two nights ago. So I don't know what the deal is here, <laughs> but last night it was the element of fire burning something sacred and... Um, something old, right? It was very ancient, whatever this was. Like, you know, not churches that you would necessarily find in this country, except maybe on the East Coast where, you know, there have been maybe buildings that have been up since the 1500s, but uh, maybe even European type um, buildings that are much older. And uh, anyway, so fire, fire is that element. So we'll see what happens I don't know what the messages are all about, but I'm certainly finding going to sleep at night an interesting <laughs> process and then waking up to, I don't know what kind of dream I'm going to have the next day. So, okay, um, let's see. Debbie Tibbetts Tumiel. Hey, that all fits. Worked out something that works for Rita. Me, fur babies are visiting Mimi. Happy, happy. Yay, good. Um, and Sarah says, thank you. And everybody's starting to say happy birthday to you, uh, Sarah and Colleen. Good morning. And <laughs> no, Tom, we are not all singing to Sarah, but if you would like to go right ahead. And Mimi says, woohoo, Deb, I'm excited to get to see you. I'm excited for the two of you too. And Stevens, good morning to you. All right, let's jump back into the day today. Something else very interesting going on, and that is Jupiter in a conjunction at 22 degrees of Sagittarius with Ceres, the mother goddess. And sort of the uh, themes that come up with, you know, first of all, let's look at a conjunction. What does a conjunction mean? Well, a conjunction is literally when two planets are occupying the same degree of the zodiac together. Obviously, they can't be occupying the same space in the sky, right? That's not that's not possible. But if we are looking at the zodiac as a three-dimensional view, uh, or we could look at it in 5D if you'd like. It is multidimensional and the planets can stack one another, you know, throughout uh, space, but at the same degree. So Jupiter and Ceres at the same degree, bringing up themes around faith and trust and our hearts, right? Are we living from our hearts? And are we using our love and our heart energy to a cause, right? Are we, uh, do we have a cause? And are we applying ourselves to that cause? And it could be any kind of cause. I mean, it could be uh, the cause is your family, making sure your family has everything they need. It could be making sure that you are out there in the workplace being the best you, right? But are we living from a cause? What, what drives you, you know, from in behind the scenes to get up and get motivated and move on out into the world each day? What is that about? 
Um, Jupiter and Ceres come together, represent generosity with your time, with your resources, with your attention, and being willing to share and give of yourself and of whatever it is that you see as a need out there that needs to be filled. There is a very strong concern for the environment when we deal with Ceres. Uh, concern for the environment, concern for the food supply, so i.e., agriculture, concern for our children who are making sure they're getting enough food, uh, that they're being fed. Interestingly enough, hold on, I want to check and see what gate that is because somewhere along the line here, Jupiter, not until Monday, but Jupiter is at the last uh, few days of its transit through the gate 26 in your human design, which is to say that integrity has been a big signpost out there for us in terms of how we grow and remember integrity isn't just this moral view of how to behave in in society or in the world it's about being true to you right because integrity is part of the the root word for integument your skin so being true to you being in your own skin claiming your own authority and claiming your own or living from your own authenticity so Jupiter and Ceres are kind of coming together there in the last days of that uh, energy of integrity. Then they will move on into the gate of enlightenment, right? Because Jupiter will move on the 28th into the gate 11, where it already gave us a preview of this back in April before it went retrograde. And of course, Ceres wasn't close to uh, Jupiter at that point in time. But Jupiter is doing some really interesting things because over the next several uh, days, well, actually into November, Jupiter is going to conjunct the galactic center. So let's watch about Jupiter and see what is going on with ourselves in terms of our growth and being optimistic for the future, um, concern for the environment, seeing the truth, capital T truth, right? Capital T uh, in the current state of the planet. The current state of everything being here on this planet at this moment and not getting caught up in the minutia of all of the struggles and the infighting and the stuff that goes on out there in the news. Speaking of the news, two things I want to tell you. One, my son sent me this uh, um, video yesterday and it was about a rapper. So at first I wasn't going to look at it because I really it's not my, I mean, I like rap music sometimes, but you know, it's not my favorite music and I didn't recognize who this person was, but because my son said, I love this guy, I went, okay, I'll bite. And it was this wonderful letter this man received from a mother whose 12 year old daughter was in despair, 12 years old. And she wanted to commit suicide. She was so depressed about the state of the world, the state of the planet, the state of her own, you know, friends and her, um, I, I, I suspect she was being bullied at school and for her life was not worth living. And this rapper uh, built a rap song just for her and put in all of the things, you know, there, I guess he really felt an affinity for her because he was also sort of an outcast type person when he was her age. And so he sent her a song and she's this beautiful artist. She had all of this artistic talent and her mom had sent him a, a, a copy of one of, of her art um, drawings. It looked sort of like anime, but it was really very cute and really very well done. And so he goes out to the store and he buys her this entire like shopping basket filled with art supplies, pencils and pens and paper and sketchbooks and stencils. And I, I mean, you name it. He just filled this basket up and sent her her personalized ra uh, rap song along with this uh, basket full of, of art supplies. It was so fantastic, right? Because in, in my own mind, I never think of rappers as being that selfless. Right. And that's a word we're going to hear uh, for today and into the weekend. And uh, what was the second story? Well, I'll think about it. Let me go on to something else that's going on today. And then if I remember what the other good news story was. How easily things flit out of my head. <laughs> All right, well, let's go on. So Jupiter conjunct series then really bringing us into some of the abundant things about our world. Ah, I remember. 
So the other thing, um, for those of you who aren't fully believing, let's say, that there is a climate change issue, and I would say most of you here probably do see the climate changing and go, yeah, wow, we've had an effect on this. Uh, back in the 70s, and maybe it was even the early 80s, we saw that there were, was a, a giant hole in the ozone layer, uh, basically around Antarctica. And it is the ozone layer that protects us from radiation incoming from uh, outer space. And it protects our planet, right? Without that, we would likely die. Um, we, we wouldn't be able to survive, at least not in the way that we have evolved to survive. We evolved along with that ozone layer to protect us from uh, runaway mutations. And it, along about the 70s, late 70s, maybe early 80s, we recognized that the hole in the ozone layer was getting bigger, and it was likely because of chlorofluorocarbons, which were the propellants used in aerosol sprays. And we, as people, decided, we decided, and we legislated that we would do away with chlorofluorocarbons and we would replace those propellants with other ingredients, other things that wouldn't be so devastating to that particular part of our environment. Well, yesterday a report came out that the ozone hole has shrunk to the smallest it's been since back in uh, you know, the, the late 50s. And I found that to be exciting because we can affect our environment when we choose to come together and say, we will not tolerate this, right? This is something much more dangerous than what we, you know, want to deal with. We can make change. And we did. We came together. We agreed. And we made a change. We have affected that now. Of course, that's been some 40 years ago, right? 30 to 40 years ago. But we can do it and we did it. So why can't we do the same now? We know that carbon and carbon dioxide is feeding into the greenhouse effect on this planet. We know that methane is creating havoc and exacerbating the, meth the uh, greenhouse effect. Why can't we, why don't we say enough is enough, right? When we do that, then Mother Goddess series over here, she is going to be jumping for joy because all of that carbon and all of that greenhouse gas, it eventually creates a problem in the food chain, right? It's already created disruptions in our climate. You know it and I know it, right? We do have regular, you know, ups and downs in our climate. That's that natural sort of, of variation. But when you see things like hurricanes that they're looking at having to go to a category six because they're so powerful. This was a typhoon in Japan that was, you know, looking at, at being a category six. I mean, come on. We, we know there's a problem, right? So Ceres, the goddess planet, if we really start to pay attention to what these goddess energies are bringing us, they're bringing us the optimism for the future. And that shrinking ozone hole is hugely optimistic. It's a huge reason to celebrate and be optimistic because we have an impact. And it was simple. All we did was replace chlorofluorocarbons with something else, right? We can replace oil and our dependence on oil and gas with something else, something else cleaner, right? Based on your bio region. Right? Maybe your region has a lot of water and you can use hydropower. Maybe your region has a lot of wind and you can use wind power. Maybe you're sitting in geothermal energy. We can do this, right? And that's kind of what I see here with Jupiter conjuncting Ceres. This is a 12-year cycle. Jupiter won't conjunct Ceres again for 12 years unless somewhere in between times here they come together in, I don't think there'll even be a retrograde where they come back together for 12 years. And that would give us this time to um, to broaden our horizons, right? To, to take those next steps and to see what it is that we could accomplish in terms of the carbon footprint on the planet if we come together and we demand that this take place, right? Instead of arguing about whether it is or isn't happening, because it is happening, right? <laughs> it is happening. And whether we're the sole cause of it or whether it's a natural variation or not doesn't matter. We know we're contributing to it and the fact that we know we're contributing to it says we should do something about that, right? Because we can, 
because we have the technology available. So why not do it? Well, I can tell you there's only one reason, and it comes down to greed. It comes down to the oil companies and the billionaires that are making money off pulling oil and gas out of the earth, and coal even, out of the earth, and using it. It seems so, it's so logical uh, I, that I just don't even believe that it keeps happening over and over again. So I see hope here, and I see that we can have faith in humanity's ability to see that there is a problem and to put our thinking caps on and to move forward in ways that are, are uh, good for the environment and good for our children and good for the planet. Okay off my soapbox for a minute now. <laughs> Let's go on to another minor thing that is happening in the background today, and that is the sun in an in conjunct to Chiron. In conjuncts, we talked about them yesterday. They're places where we need to adjust our energy, where we have to let go of a sacred cow perhaps, or where we have to sacrifice something in order to be able to move forward, right? We might have to sacrifice our dependence on oil in order to move forward, right? In a healthy environment. Well, the sun and Chiron trigger doubt in us, doubt and uncertainty about our role, about our who we are, about how we express ourselves, doubt and uncertainty are not meant to be aimed inward, right? It's meant to be aimed outward. And it's meant to be, you know, combined with your discernment in determining what's true and what isn't in terms of what's, you know, being said and, you know, what's the truth. Do your due diligence, in other words, is kind of what this energy says. It is also about where we are not standing in our own power. And power is a big theme this weekend, right? Power with the new moon happening in Scorpio on Sunday, the moon, you know, is right now in Libra, but, you know, heading towards Scorpio, planets other than the sun and the earth or the sun and the moon going to be in Scorpio, right? Mercury and Venus. And we have a, this focus uh, on things, all things Scorpionic, all things power and regeneration. So this is a personal regeneration. This is a personal calling back of your power and re-empowering yourself. Not taking power away from others in order to do that, but being in your own power, standing in your own power. Something else interesting going on today, Pluto, the planet of power and transformation and sex, death, rebirth, and the whole idea of regeneration is moving forward again and now it's back at the gate 61 in your human design. It is the middle gate of the very top center. This is one of the gates that is the reason why we don't choose to, why we should not, why we are not meant to make decisions from our head, because it's the gate of awe and wonderment and the mystery. And it is the perpetual questioning of why, why and how and it can get us in this loop, right? This loop thinking. And Pluto at the gate 61 is in Gene Key's shadow energy, psychosis. Not a good place to make decisions from. No, 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 no. And literally, there are more people on the planet right now living psychotically, living in psychosis, than there are people living in the gift level of inspiration. This is why Neptune has been so important in the different configurations that he has been making because he brings us back our spiritual self, inspiration, in spirit, right? Being the spirit within, being aligned with the spirit within and uh, or being, you know, aligning the physical and the spiritual. When that happens, we are inspirited or we are filled with inspiration as opposed to psychosis psychosis, right? Um, in human design, we call this the gate of inner truth. If you can wade through all of that thought and that field of thought that just keeps taking you back, back and back again to the same thing, right? The beating your head on the brick wall kind of feeling, right? The trying to solve the problem from the same level from which it was created, which Einstein tells us is not possible. It isn't possible that you can solve a problem from that same level. You have to move up a level to be able to solve a problem. So we come to a space of inner truth with Pluto here at this gate, where we are engaged in the mystery and the awe and the magic that is this 
person that you are. That is this world that you live in. That is this potential when you are inspirited to create far beyond your wildest dreams. So while Pluto sitting here has this huge potential for how it can express, likely in the short term anyway, we are going to be seeing the effects of it at the psychotic level where we, you know, look outside out, outside of us and, you know, we could just be shaking our heads, right? Things repeating themselves, the, you know, it's getting tiresome, isn't it? It's really getting tiresome to look out in that outer world and see, oh my God, you people are so mentally ill, right? That It's just crazy out there sometimes. So if we can move ourselves out of that psychosis, that field of psychotic behavior, moving into becoming inspirited, we have a chance, right? We can move on. And I think that's interesting too, because today's Pleiadian Earth energy is seven catalyzing energy, which is Kawayak in the Mayan calendar. It represented the thunderstorm, right? Or the storm, and the storm energy that clears the air, right? That that breaks the tension and clears out the old stagnant energy and creates an opening for the new, right? Every one of us has been in a storm, right? A, a physical. Let's talk about a physical storm, a rainstorm, or a thunderstorm. And the next day, once the storm clears out, the air is fresh and clean, and everything looks renewed and beautiful. We've all been there. We've all seen that. We've all experienced that, no doubt. So this catalyzing energy today is about rising up to the challenge of clearing out the old and moving into the new. While the universal energy of the day, the seven, is about merging consciousness. It is about oneness and unity. It brings us together in common uh, pursuits. Right. So seven catalyzing. It is about clearing the environment of toxins, clearing your home of toxins, perhaps clearing your uh, your 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 regular environment that you work through, that you work in um, of toxins, etc. So an interesting set of uh, energies for the day today that I find are you know pretty coherent uh, in, in terms of what they are bringing us to. Okay, I'm going to check in and see if anybody has questions, uh, comments. Debbie Hedden, Debbie Johnson, hello, hello. Deb Johnson says, good morning, beautiful people. First time here. Awesome, Deb. Thank you for joining us. I'm happy to have you here joining us in the Meta Cafe. Can I ask for a card ahead of time? I am going to write your name. I don't know that we'll get to it. It's already almost 8.30, but Deb Johnson, I will certainly put you on the list if we get to that point, okay? And by the way, thank you for joining us again. Debbie Hedden, happy birthday. Sarah, Tom, I love our Gemini minds. <laughs> Sarah Raven, Raven's Eye, yay, this is all great news. Deb Johnson, so much we can do. Stop burning the forest, absolutely. Um, Catherine Worcester, good morning. Sarah says, sounds like the story of my human design life. <laughs> exactly, right? Um, you know, with this, I, I love our, our interactions in the morning. So keep the comments coming. I just love that. All right, let's look ahead to tomorrow's energy, Saturday. The moon will be in Libra. Tomorrow tomorrow might be a bit of a scritchy day. Scritchy, you know, that feeling like you're irritated, but you're not quite sure why, and irritable, and, uh, you know, just like something's nagging at you. Well, that will be because the moon is conjunct Mars tomorrow, and it will be likely maybe a couple of hours at most that may color your day. Don't let it take you down for the entire day. Maybe use the, the energy as a catalyst to get something done, right? Put that irritation to work for you. Later in the day, the moon will square Saturn and Pluto. That's pretty powerful energy moving through the field. It's emotional. We can get caught up in the feelings of uh, disaster or doom and gloom. Uh, Again, try not to let that be the, the overriding energy. If you see that happening, get, you know, take your attention somewhere else, right? Let your attention go to a different place. I have football games to go to tomorrow. I'm hoping that the boys will use this energy uh, to go out there and win the game. You know, I just, I, I got to tell you guys, I love watching kids play football. I love it because when kids are not being interfered with by parents or coaches, um, they play the game. They play the game, 
right? It's a game. They play the game. Parents are over here screeching at the refs and yelling and jumping up and down. And, um, you know, the kids are helping each other up off the field. They're patting each other on the back. Um, you know, they're, they're playing. <laughs> I love watching the kids play the game. And as long as the adults stay out of the uh, fray, then usually everything goes peacefully. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, there aren't times where they're the boys themselves or the girls even get, you know, their emotions triggered and they, you know, express that. But it just shows you that when, when we're out there, even in a competitive situation, that there are ways that we treat each other that don't have to be, um, you know, uh, angry and upset. Although tomorrow it may be harder to remember that in the moment. So if you're a parent of a kid playing football tomorrow or playing soccer or any other kind of sport, remember that. Try not to live vicariously through your child, right? Try not to live out your own issues from your childhood through your child, which happens so frequently. It's scary, right, to watch, to step back and watch. Um, anyway, grandparents, right? I can step back and I can look in and say, oh yeah, that's interesting. Uh, let's talk about what the Libra moon itself brings us to. Libra moon represents partnerships. We have marriage partnerships. We have live together, you know, co uh, communal type partnerships. We have business partnerships. Libra energy with partnerships represents the team and the three C's, collaboration, cooperation, and co-creation, right? When we remember that energy, we are working together to build something or to solve a problem or to create a win-win situation as opposed to win-lose or lose-lose, right? So Libra gives us that high side opportunity to co-create and cooperate and collaborate in ways that we can only dream about. Like right now, if we could just see Congress coming together in this country, Parliament coming together for those of you that are in England, or, uh, you know, any groups that are out there coming together and utilizing those three energies, what a wonderful world it would be, right? Again, I'm going to break out into song here. Um, Libra Moon represents beauty and the aesthetic principles, the aesthetic uh, principle of beauty and harmony, um, design and culture, uh, our uh, uh, concept of elegance and what, you know, being stylish so it's a very, uh, it, I always think of Libra energy uh, in terms of your environment as feng shui, right? Where this beautiful serenity and harmony and flow of energy that moves uh, it, with ease and with grace. A Libra moon brings us balance, right? Being able to see opposing sides of things and to be able to come into the middle fairly, um, seeing other people's points of view. Equality, of course, comes into this one. Um, meditation as a way to bring in balance. I thought that was an interesting thing that we could just throw out there, right? How many people in the rush of the day forget meditation? I do it all the time. I mean, not meditation. I forget to <laughs> get meditation, right? To get my time in for centering and balancing. And Libra Moon might remind us about that, the need for us to come back to our center and to find that serenity and harmony from within. We want to watch out for being so team oriented that we lose ourselves, we lose our personal identity. Libra is the balance between the I and the we, I, we, right? And watch out for indecision or waffling or changing your mind or not being able to make a decision if a decision is called for. Also watch out for over, uh, overly siding on the side of yes. Um, sometimes, you know, Libra in, in their need to feel like they belong and to be a part of the team, they can say yes too much and say yes to the wrong things. And then they become bogged down uh, and, they can often be the, there's the chatty Cathy aspect of some of the Libran energies. So we want to watch out for that tomorrow as well, tomorrow and Sunday. Uh, so partly today, all day tomorrow, and then most of the day on Sunday, we don't really get to the new moon uh, or the, uh, the energy of uh, Scorpio until 1.39 p.m., 1.30 p.m. my time, so 4.30 p.m., so literally most of the day on Sunday, we're also with the moon in Libra. 
Now, from the Pleiadian point of view, uh, tomorrow, Saturday, is an eight enlightening. Enlightening is the last of, it is the 20th of the 20 earth signs. It is a how in the Mayan calendar, which represented the light of the God, the light of the king or the queen. Actually, they didn't have queens, so the light of the king. And it is that very uh, uh, focused energy on identity, on ideals, on ideas, on social progress, of coming together as a community or a society. And the uh, universal energy of eight is about connection, right? The eight is the number of connections. So we're communicating, we're extending outward to other groups. We are in the flow of information and the flow of community. So we have that all happening tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Angela, great to see you out there. Uh, she says, uh, you may have mentioned this before, but what is the significance of having the new moon in the same placement as your natal moon? Would this be more powerful than the degree matching up to the many planets in your chart? Well, literally what you're you're talking about there, uh, Angela, is a personal new moon. So the fact that uh, you, the moon would be coming back to the same place it was when you were born sets you up for a new moon. Now, it would have to be fairly close to that same degree. So I'm not sure if that's what you're seeing or if it's just in the same sign, um, because the moon, of course, makes many different connections throughout its transit. And uh, it could be if the moon, if, if the new moon is sitting just before your natal moon in Scorpio, then you're in the dark of the moon. And there may yet be some inner work that you need to do before you get to the new. If it is at the new, then this is your personal new moon. If it is after it, then it is likely you're somewhere between the new moon and the first quarter moon. So you're setting the pace for what comes next, right? So I hope that helps. Um, if you know those degrees, then let me know. The new moon, uh, which is where we're transiting over to right now, uh, well, we will in a second, is uh, going to be at four degrees of Scorpio, four degrees, 25 minutes. So if you know the degree of your own moon, that might help me as well. Uh, Tom, okay, team, go out there and be scritchy. <laughs> yes, indeed. Angela says we have soccer games tomorrow. There you go. And Monique Alexander, hello. I think I've seen you out here before, so but if not, welcome, and we're glad to have you joining us. All right, one last word about Saturday's energy, and then we'll move into the new moon. And cool, I think we're we're doing pretty good time-wise. Uh, tomorrow we begin the new human design week. That means the sun will be moving out of the gate 50, where the fear that we've been dealing with is, is that we will fail in our responsibilities to our family, our uh, communities, or our tribes. And moving into a new fear gate, the gate 28, whose shadow energy, the fear, is about purposelessness. Say that 10 times fast. So we have the lowest expression of purposelessness, and the antidote to that or the gift energy is totality, being all in, right? Totality, letting it overcome you, take you in, letting life take you in, right? And the highest expression, the gift expression is immortality when we are dealing with the sun at 28. In human design, it is called the gate of tenacity or perseverance. And it has a repressed energy of purposelessness. Like, why is this, you know, what is all of this about? Is there any life? Is there any meaning to life? Uh, why am I here? You know, the sad sack sort of, of of energy, the, you know, drooping eyes and the, you know, oh, woe is me. What am I, you know, what is this all about? Uh, in the more re uh, rebellious expression, this is thrill seeking energy. There's an entire part of the population in the millennials that was born with important planets sitting at this gate 28 and they alternate between that feeling of this is all useless there's no point in being on this planet what's the purpose of life and the thrill seeking type of behavior so for some of you this will be not necessarily new energy but it can you know expound on that energy that you maybe already have in your chart while the sun is at gate 28, the earth will be at gate 27. And who else is at 27 right now? You might not remember this, but the planet Uranus is sitting at the gate 27. That puts earth this week in a conjunction to Uranus. And we don't often think about the earth 
in uh, the way that she is uh, mixing with the other planets because we sit here. So we're earth centric. It's hard for us to see that clearly, right? If we were sitting on the sun, we'd be able to see it clearly, but we're sitting here on the earth. So we don't see it clearly, but indeed the earth will be sitting on top of or in tandem with the planet Uranus for the next week at least. And in that we are probably going to see some upsets. We are probably going to see some things that are surprising or shocking. We may be awakened to something. We may have some wonderful surprises and ahas and epiphanies, maybe some revelation. Um, my guess, because most of the energy for the upcoming week is going to be in Scorpio, it's going to be secrets being revealed, dirt coming up from underneath, um, you know, and things being exposed. So that's just sort of another energy that's going on out there. But the gate 27 is the gate of, in the shadow, the gate of selfishness. Selfishness. In the gift expression, it is altruism. And in the highest expression, it is selflessness. Um, in human design, we call this the gate of nourishing. It sits actually on the sacral and reaches over to the Yes, it sits on the sacral and it's reaching out over to the spleen. And it's an energy, uh, it's a feminine energy. It, even though it's sitting on the sacral, which seems, feels like yang energy or masculine energy, this is feminine energy. It's on the tribal circuitry uh, that is on the feminine side. So here's where we feed and clothe and cook for, care for, make sure everybody's needs are taken care of. It is in the lowest expression codependent energy, self too overly self-sacrificing or self-sacrificing. Instead of selflessness, it is self-sacrificing. And in the more rebellious form, it is selfishness. So we have to look at where are we nourished and being nourished uh, versus where are we withholding love, withholding care, uh, from others in our world or seeing it most likely in the outer world. Uranus is a planet that's on the, you know, way out there. So it's more of a collective planet. We'll see it in the outer world while the earth, of course, is more personal. So we may be called out to become more selfless, more altruistic in the things that we do. So watch for those things to pop up in the news, um, you know, over the next uh, couple of Day, probably for the next five days or so, yeah. All right, any questions about anything for tomorrow? Uh, she says, Debbie, I hate to miss Fridays, but one of my days to get my grandson will watch later. You got it, girl. Have a great weekend, Debbie. Kathy Miller, good morning. Angela says, my moon is 27 Scorpio, and I have four planets at four degrees in my chart. W was wondering what to focus on for more for aspects. Last year, the Scorpio new moon was at 27. So you had your personal new moon last year, right? So you are in still in a new moon sort of phase. Um, so what is it that you started last year? What are you opening up to? And that's what you're working on right now. I'm going to go into what it means, what some of the Scorpio things are to focus on with this new moon. And maybe that will help you out. Okay, Angela. Uh, Sarah says that Scorpio Libra gate is leaving us tomorrow. <laughs> and Kathy, good morning. Excited to go to the great junk hunt craft event in Salem this evening. That sounds like fun. Going with your sister and my nieces. Have a great weekend. You too, Kathy. And, uh, you know, take some pictures and show us what some things are that you, some treasures that you get while you're there. Uh, April, good morning to you. Okay, so let's transition over to Sunday and see if we can't answer some of Angela's questions about what to focus on for Scorpio energy in this new moon. Uh, first of all, the moon in Libra will be void of course Sunday from 1.23 a.m. Pacific time to 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. So what is that? The 4.23 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. for you all on the East Coast. The then it will be, the moon will move into Scorpio and will be setting up for that new moon, which does not occur until 8.39 p.m. Pacific, 11.39 p.m. East Coast time. For those of you in Europe and parts east, your new moon will actually occur the next day. That will be actually on uh, uh, Monday. So it'll be the 28th for you all. And, uh, 
it'll be an interesting moon because this particular new moon is at for Scorpio. So we're in the opening energies of Scorpio. And that means that the sun and moon are going to be in an opposition to Uranus. Uranus is sitting at, is it four degrees? It must be four degrees of Taurus. And the new moon will be at four degrees of Scorpio. So they're exactly opposing one another. Then with, your, uh, with Uranus and Earth in a conjunction, we also have this high potential for some excitement for some you know surprises that you know that awakening kind of energy but the sun and moon are also in a quincunx to chiron that day so there's some difficulty here there's some wounding here there's still some shadow energy that we're merging through the sun moon will be in a quintile to saturn i think this gives us the opportunity to buck up and to really move into our power centers and we have a square a, a minor square a sesquiquadrate, a sesquisquare, let's call it, to the black moon Lilith. So we have two two pieces that show us uh, our wounds are uh, likely going to be triggered or our shadows triggered in some way. And then uh, one piece that shows us surprises, kabooms, that kind of thing. And another one, the sun moon uh, conjunction that are our opening to something new. Now, when I, I think I showed you guys the chart, let's do it right now because some of you are new. So I showed you the chart. This is the chart of the new moon. And what I did was I highlighted this conglomeration of planets here between the sign of Scorpio, Sagittarius and Capricorn. And I'm sorry, my, my focus for whatever reason on the camera is going in and out, or at least it looks like it to me. Um, so I think this new moon because now these two pieces are going to be moving into all of these other pieces, the sun and the moon, and eventually Mars moving into all of these other energies. I found that this would be the opening salvo to what is 2020, right? So we're going to start to see over these next couple of months while the sun is transiting through the rest of Scorpio and Sagittarius and then on into Capricorn, what it is that we might be experiencing in the bigger, wider framework of life in 2020. Uh, yesterday, I was doing a video for the people, those of you who were um, first believers in buying the, the Energy Almanac for 2020. One of the freebie gifts that you got for purchasing that almanac early was uh, a video from me about 2020. And so while I was looking at that yesterday and, and producing that video, I was like, wow, it is so important for every one of us to be in our own space and to know who we are and to, to really live our lives from, from a place of being spirit in action because things are going to be so crazy. And by the way, you've already been living this crazy, right? These, these kinds of epic and I mean epic, E-P-O-C-H, epical um, transits don't happen in a vacuum. So literally we're looking to January 12th because we know that's the day those two planets are going to to uh, conjunct, Saturn and Pluto. But up until then, we've already been experiencing what those two bring to us, which is destruction and reconstruction of something. And, you know, one of the points that I, I, I think, you know, you guys hear me talk about the because I live in the United States, of course, I'm much more aware of what's happening here in the United States. But this is even more critical for us here in the United States because the USA is, is getting primed to move through its first Pluto return. You as a person, you don't experience a Pluto return because you don't live long enough. A Pluto, a return of any planet is when it comes back to the place it was when you were born. Well, Pluto's cycle is 248 some years, 235 to 250, depending on the sign. And the United States birthday, which was July 4th, 19, or 1776, puts us at about the 238th year. We are at that cusp of a Pluto return. Every country that's ever had a Pluto return, and you can look at countries like England uh, or the United Kingdom, where they've gone through three Pluto returns, they always characterize a destruction of something, right? A disruption in the, in the way things are. And that leads to a regeneration 
or in the case of Rome, it led to the fall and the breakup of Rome. And the difference between the fact that the United Kingdom has survived three Pluto returns while the, the uh, empire of Rome fell is in the measure of the leadership and the consciousness, the relative consciousness of the people, the people of the time. Now remember, Rome is before uh, England, right? So, you know, we're, we're moving through an evolutionary process. So I fully expect that we have evolved far enough even though sometimes you look in that outer world and you just shake your head and go, oh my God, I can't believe he said that. I can't believe that's happening. I can't believe that's going to be happening. We have evolved consciousness enough, I think, that we can move through this Pluto return, through this next year to two years more of craziness and come out at the other end more conscious, more aware of how we work together, of our interdependence. Remember, Chiron is in Aries. It's teaching us interdependence and, you know, move through some of these more challenging times. However, we've got this space that we're living in right now where things are pretty tricky. This new moon brings us to the verge, to the gateway, to the portal of that craziness. So it's like, you know, waves, right? They come, they build, and we're building, we're almost to that crescendo, then they, they hold their space for a while, and then they break. So we're not to the break, we're at the, we're at the beginning of the crescendo, we're at the building of the, uh, the crest of uh, this very powerful regenerative wave. So this moon, highly important right? Highly important just because of that. And every new moon after this will be that way. Every full moon after this will be this way, where it's just adding to the ability that we have to begin something new and to let go of the old, letting go of the old, letting go of the old, opening to the new, opening to the new on a bigger scale than than just the person or just the individual. But your individuality counts because you affect all the people around you. So don't underestimate your importance in living out the high side of your life, right? That's the important backdrop to this new moon. Now, if we look deeper, if we go inward and we look at what is happening with what are the high side energies of Scorpio and what are the things that are going to trip us up with this kind of Scorpio new moon, first, the major is about power, right? Power and empowerment. And in that, sometimes we have to release all of the secrets. If, if people would just be transparent, right? If our governments were just transparent, if our groups, our corporations and institutions were transparent, then we wouldn't have these secrets that boil up, right? And create havoc. But likely that is a part of the experience that we will have as secrets and politics and psychology and exposing of secrets and motives and all kinds of stuff starts to bubble up. Um, but this is a great time, a great moon for personal empowerment and for establishing your personal ambitions. What do you want to do? What is your part that you want to play? And, you know, maybe, you know, being aware of what's going out there in the world, but not being a part of it necessarily, right? Just there's, there's a line you kind of have to draw so that you can focus on your own personal path of empowerment. Uh, the new moon in Scorpio brings us to transcendent energy. It is about transformation. Scorpio is ruled by both Mars and Pluto. And Pluto is the planet of empowerment and transformation. And what is about transformation? Well, what are you carrying as baggage? What do you have to release and let go of in order to be able to move forward, right? So we're releasing baggage. We're in the flux of uh, uh, a changing dynamic um, on the world stage, on the national stage, in our personal lives, our communities. So change is a big part of this new moon and embracing that change and moving with that. And forgiveness is another part of this. What must you forgive yourself for? What must you forgive that you're seeing in the outer world? Your creations, the things that you don't like about what's being, you know, going on out there creating forgiveness. Uh, the new moon in uh, Scorpio can bring us to crisis energy, crisis energy. You can think of crisis as a storm and as the storm passes, it clears the air. So if with crisis energy, we may see power grabbing, 
We may see power struggles. We may see intense interactions between people or in your own life with you and other people, your partners or your uh, your your friends, etc. cetera, um, living on the edge, right? We're living on an edge here. Uh, obsessive compulsive energies, right? We all can, you know, relate to where we may have a compulsion or an obsession and how is that, is that helping us? Is it supportive of who we are? And can we let it go and move on? And if you need help with that, then the moon in Scorpio is a great time to reach out to a counselor or a psychologist to help you move through any of those things that you feel you're out of you know, alignment with mentally uh, or emotionally even. Self-mastery is also a part of this new moon. You know, it's funny that it's, you know, the, the moon and the sun, the sun in particular in Scorpio is about, you know, good versus evil. We see that in Halloween and Halloween followed by the, the All Saints Day, right? So on the evening, Halloween, all the ghosts and the goblins and the, the ghouls are out and then uh, everything quiets down and the saints come out on the next day. I mean, that's a paraphrasing. I don't know the, the depths of the All Saints Day, but um, it's just interesting that that theme of good and evil is very much there. The theme of strength and self-discipline, right? How do you want to be, how do you want to show up in your world? Do you want to show up with strength and courage, or do you want to show up as weak? And uh, what is the level of your commitment? That is another word that we can bring here. And creating depth of character rather than this just superficial face that you want to show the world. Where's your depth? And persevering through all of the things that are going on in your own life. Um, Scorpio is the ruling sign for the eighth house in the astrology chart. In the eighth house, we talk about bonding and merging. It is about sex and sexuality. It is about finding your soulmate, right? That's an important part of what can happen during this period of time. It is about the deep com emotional connections we have, our intimate connections that we have. We all seek intimacy in some ways, or we are all some. Some are afraid of intimacy, and we have the opportunity during the new moon in Scorpio to work through those kinds of issues. And the bonding and merging with spirit is also apparent in Scorpio, where this is one of the more psychic signs. This is one of the more psychic positions for the sun and the moon and the other planets that are sitting here right now. And there's even prophecy involved and all of the clairs, clairaudience, clairsentience, clairvoyance, and you, you know, you can name all of the types of ways that we can be psychic and you can find them profoundly being uh, triggered right now in your own personal life. Uh, in matters of finances, because the eighth house also rules your finances that you share with your partner or that we share uh, that re we receive from outside of what we earn. And that might be financial partnerships. So things like loans and taxes and debts and grants and credits and all of that type of thing. And I thought it was interesting yesterday that the, in the news, one of the uh, was, I think he was the deputy director of the education department, came right out and said, we need to forgive student loans. We need to have a redo, right? We need to clear the board of uh, student loan. We need to forgive the student debt. We need to start over. We need to get the government out of loans. And also, for those of you who were good and already paid your student loans, you didn't have issues paying that, we're going to give you a $50,000 or up to a $50,000 tax credit. I thought that was so unique and out of the box. And, and how was he going to fund that? He was going to fund that with a 1% tax on the corporate uh, corporations, the giants out there. Uh, I mean, some of you may cry foul. I thought it was really interesting. And it's right in alignment with Scorpio energy. And remember, we haven't gotten to the new moon yet. However, we have Mercury and Venus and Pallas Athena already in, Mer in uh, Scorpio. And now we're at, and we added the sun on uh, Thursday this week or Wednesday this week. And so, of course, these things are coming up, right? 
Um, it is also about wills, inheritances, and legacies. Some of you may be at a point in your life where you need to start thinking about what is it that you want to leave behind? What is it that, you know, you want? And in your dying days, you may not be at death's door. That's not what this is about. But it is about setting yourself up for that eventual end and being able to um, make it easier on those left behind to, um, you know, settle your estate or to enact your wishes, your final wishes. And of course, contracts and business will probably likely hear a lot about that in the upcoming days and weeks. <sighs> we can't talk about Scorpio, the eighth house, Pluto, without going to the dark side, right? The underbelly because that's what these guys expose. They expose these more taboo energies or these things that we don't want to look at, right? You know, talk to the hand. I don't want to look at this, but we have to, right? If we don't, then they exist in our world and they drive us crazy, right? Things like revenge and jealousy, possessiveness. These are all negative qualities, the, the dark side energies that create the possibility of the misuse of power in our world paranoia another part of the dark side here judgment destructive urges power struggles abandonment issues all of that a part of the experience of the more negative energies of scorpio or the expression of those energies in scorpio uh the eighth house and the planets engaged there mars and pluto Last but not least, in matters of your health, what part of the body does Scorpio rule? Well, as you might expect, it rules the lower digestive system, the elimination processes. So again, right, we don't like to talk about that. Who talks about poop, right? But this is what we're talking about here. In your body, are you holding on to stuff where you get constipated? Or are you releasing too much and you have the opposite thing happening here? So the body's excretory system is, is ruled by Scorpio. What are you holding on too tightly to? What are you letting go of too much? That system is engaged with Scorpio as well as the reproductive system. So sexual dysfunctions and sexual diseases, sexual, sexually transmitted diseases, all a part of the health energy of Scorpio, as well as the organs of sex, the reproductive organs for both the male and the female. So if you need help healing that, then this is the new moon for that because the focus is on that part of the body. Um, if you have find yourself getting sick during this period of time, likely it may be in one of those areas of the body. Uh, if for women, it also is the sign that rules PMS and your whole menstrual cycle comes from, uh, and it's interesting, the moon in Scorpio also may be uh, showing up in, in uh you know, your, uh, where you are in that cycle of, of womanhood. Okay. Wow. That was a lot. That was a lot. We've gone through a lot here and we're already after 9 AM, uh, comments, questions. Hey ladies, I'm Scorpio ascendant. This is neat. Yep. Angela says, thank you. You're welcome. Marissa. Good morning. Debbie Tibbetts, two meal. That's I don't know what that says, honey. World war one energy for the States. World, World War One. Well, you know, interestingly enough, Debbie, uh, <laughs> some of the biggest things that have happened under a Saturn-Pluto conjunction are things like World War One, uh, the French Revolution, the fall of Rome, uh, the Civil War wasn't included in that one, but it's possible we hear Civil War being banded around, you know, right now all around. Uh, but it's really interesting how some of those those uh, sneaky sort of wars come up during a Saturn-Pluto. Um, if you go back to 1982, Saturn and Pluto conjuncted not necessarily in Capricorn, but um, there was the, those were the Reagan years and the idea of economics and plutocrats, right? Plutocracy. Uh, I do believe that conjunction that time was in Scorpio. And uh, plutocracy, right? That's where rulership by the wealthy, right? Ask yourself, are we in a true democracy? Or is this country really a plutocracy? That is a question for debate. And I think we'll start hearing more and more about as it is the wealth that seems to have the power in this country and not the power of the people. 
So we need to recall that power because that's, you know, democracy was built on the power of the people, not the power of wealth, even though I'm sure it was a part of it. Just interesting stuff when you think about the timing of all of this stuff. What is the outer world showing us and what's the high side of all of this? So interesting that you brought that up. Uh, Tom, psychic space, the more you hide something, the brighter it shines. Yep. Just realized my natal Pluto is four degrees of Scorpio. <laughs> so personal transformation, right? Uh, a personal return to um, power. And maybe you're struggling with ideas of power versus powerlessness in your life, Angela. Uh, Debbie says, shit happens. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And of course, these are things we don't like to talk about. So we make light of them or we, you know, it, it's funny. So the colon and all of that is also ruled by um, the uh, this moon in Scorpio. So go get your colonoscopies, right? Go get your insides cleaned out. Uh, funny stuff. All right. Now, um, I because Debbie Johnson asked, I am going to do a one card reading for her. And then I'm going to do a card reading for the new moon. And I'm sorry, it's already after nine, so I don't really get to uh, to do more than just this one for Debbie Johnson. So Debbie, this is for you. This is from the Wisdom of the Oracle. Uh, Woto, the deck by Colette Baron reed that we use a lot here. And you get fork in the road upside down uh, in protection. And it is card number 13, which is a four. So fork in the road, right? Coming to a crossroads. And interesting, isn't that a llama that has antlers? That's kind of funny. All right, let's see what that card means for you then. Debbie Johnson, 13. Okay. It, the essential meanings are time to make a decision, considering the consequences as you prepare to act, Owning up to your obligation to make a necessary choice. And the message for you, Debbie, is indecision is extremely frustrating and will lead to anxiety, loss, and confusion. At this juncture, you can't remain in place without losing your way altogether. Avoid the tendency to let others choose for you, which amounts to a subtle refusal to take responsibility. Don't give your power away, not even to this oracle. By not making a choice, you are making a choice for which you must be accountable. If that choice leads to undesirable circumstances, take heart. Spirit never tires of giving you second chances. You can always start again once you've learned this valuable lesson. So that's a great card, a great reminder for all of us, I think. And by the way, when, when I do readings like this, do you ever see yourself in the cards that I'm pulling for other people? I see it all the time. I'm like, I don't even have to do readings for myself because I'm doing readings for you all. I can just go by what I see in the cards for you, for me. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to do a card now for the new moon. And actually, I think I'll, I do have it. I'm going to also do a, a pull an animal card for us for this new moon for this next period of time. Ooh, this card, two cards. want to jump. One is time for a nap. And the other one is time to go. Um, one upside down, that's the napping card, and uh, time to go is right side up. What numbers are these tar cards? 24 and 45. So let's deal with the uh, time for a nap first. Debbie, you're going to love this card, Debbie Tibbetts Tumiel. <laughs> time for a nap. And let's see here, 24 which is a six, by the way, which is uh, a number of balance, right? And peace and coming to a still point. 24, time for a nap is about rest, rejuvenation and renewal, temporary non-action, allowing dreams to arise. Um, when I say things like destruction and regeneration, that's also, you know, there are synonyms rejuvenation and renewal. So this is very apropos, I believe. Uh, but that card was upside down. So in protection, it says you are a human being, not a human doing. Is it possible you're suffering from workaholism? Could you be the one who thinks it's your job to save everyone, to be there for everyone, to go, go, go until you can barely see straight? You've gone as far as you can. 
You've worked hard and nourished people and projects, but now you are an empty well and have no reserves for others or for yourself. Don't let your ego keep you going full speed when your body and spirit need rest. Exhaustion is calling you to stop what you're doing altogether and take a break. If you don't, the appearance of this card could portend a possible illness that stems from being totally overwhelmed. You will feel like a new person if you take that break. Do it now. If that is an interesting card, I think, to pull for this because we are in that balsamic phase of the moon, the dark of the moon right now. We are at the, the moon is at its weakest point. It's most tired. It's most, most lethargic. I can't even get those words out. And so for all of us, maybe it's a great call to rest and relax and rejuvenate, um, you know, recharge your battery, so to speak. And the other card that popped out was 45, which is a nine. And it said time to go. It was upright. That was this card. Right? She's on a sidewalk going somewhere, a bridge. Um, and the sign or the card means endings, completion, walking away from something because there is nothing else to learn or experience. Mm. You are at the end of one journey and have not yet begun the next. This is the moment to bless your experience thus far. Take stock of what you've learned. It's time to move on to new experiences and a new way of being. There is nothing left for you to do, be, or experience in your present circumstances. Take the risk and move on, even if you need to be in transition for a time. Your destiny is calling you. That's a great card, too. <coughs> Let's pull an animal card that's actually going to be our guide, helping us along the way for this new moon window. And this is also a call it Baron Reed. Oh, wow. Two cards popped out here, rabbit and spider. And they were upright, both of them. Rabbit over here says, now is a lucky time. And she is card 49, I think. Yep, which is a 13, which is a four. And spider spirit says, make your dreams real. She is an 11, right? 56 plus, or 56 is an 11. <coughs> so let's see what we got here. We'll deal with rabbit first. We've had rabbit before. I've apparently been talking too long. Uh, 49 says, A sunny meadow calls and rabbit spirit appears to lead you out of your dark warren and into the light so that you can participate in a fertile and beautiful experience. It may seem safe below ground, but the magic happens when you come out and take the risk of being vulnerable and co-creating something new. You are being invited into a new life that you have no experience with, but have no fear. Today is also a time to be fruitful and productive as you enjoy rabbit spirits, sunny and prolific energy. At this time, whatever you intend to bring to life will find fertile ground. There's no mistakes, really, when you are co-creating with spirit. So let new ideas spring to the surface, knowing that now is a lucky time of tremendous possibility. <laughs> Love it. And then spider, how perfect for our week leading to Halloween. Uh, spider is energy 56. And also upright, spider says, May your dream make your dreams real. Weaving your dreams into the fabric of life begins with a single thread of intention. And then spirit joins you as your co-weaving partner. Take but a single step to make your dream a reality and spirit will take 10 toward you. For the universe is designed to support your dream weaving. Spider spirit arrives when you need reminding of the awesome power of co-creation with spirit. Ideas and resources will begin to appear as if by magic as you begin to bring your dreams from the realm of intention into the world of senses where they take form. The action you need to take is to be clear about your intentions and then act as if you have become the one that lives the life you desire. This is awesome. We've been talking about this all week. The web of creation has an uncanny way of coming together to weave the beautiful pattern you set in motion. Another message of spider spirit is about any creative project you may be considering, writing, painting, music, journaling, gardening, etc. Now is the time when inspiration wants to be channeled through you as something creative, even artistic and tangible. 
Creative projects are successful now if you are so inclined. Let yourself be open to abundance. Love it. So even though we have some dark stuff to move through, we have some really beautiful light at the end of that tunnel. Uh, I love it. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. Happy Friday to everybody. Have a great weekend. Uh, I will see you on Monday uh, as we start the new week, the last week of October. I can't even believe that. Is that true? Yes, the last week of October. Unbelievable. So everybody take care. Uh, I see other comments here. Um, no questions. Good, good, good. So I'm not missing anything there. Thank you all. Take care. See you Monday. Bye-bye.